What is going on guys and welcome back to another very exciting video. In this video we are going to be talking about the Chinese economy and how it relates to Alibaba and JD. I want to go over their EPS numbers, where they could be headed in the future. I also want to take a look at the Chinese GDP numbers, their population numbers, as well as their interest rate and where all of those could be headed over the next couple of years and how that could really affect Alibaba and JD's numbers. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below and if you want to see more videos like this one, make you hit that sub button. Let's start off by taking a look at Alibaba's stock chart. We can see that they are down almost 50% over the last five years. That is a terrible move down. A lot of that coming on news that the US would potentially delist Chinese companies as they were unable to audit their books until recently. A little bit of that concern has been mitigated over the last year or so as China has opened up their books to US auditors. However, there are still concerns around the Chinese economy as they have been hit very significantly over over the pandemic with a lot of lockdowns persisting over the last couple of years. If we look at Alibaba, they peaked out at a stock price of around $310. And from there, the stock is down over 70% to where it is sitting at now below $90. There are two important things to keep in mind when looking at Chinese companies, especially Alibaba and JD. The first is that investors are using these to gain exposure to the Chinese economy. So if the Chinese economy does well, investors tend to pile money into companies like Alibaba and JD, thus the stock price does well. The second thing is that these companies are very dependent on the relationship between China and the US government. And if that relationship is in a healthy position, then these stocks again tend to do well because they command higher valuations. However, if that relationship is strained, you tend to see valuations contract. So if we look at GDP growth over the last few years, we can see that in 2018, they were growing 6.75%. In 20 2019, they fell below 6%. And then in 2020, they saw a big dip with the pandemic down to 2.24%. And then it jumped all the way back up in 2021 to 8.45% and then fell back down to 2.99%. What we are seeing this year is the potential of a recovery back into the five to six range for GDP growth in China. In the time period from April to June, China saw 6.3% growth in their GDP. Overall, this was below expectations. Analysts were we're actually expecting somewhere around 7% growth in GDP. So this is a little bit concerning, but still to see that 6.3% come through, that is positive and shows that they are trending back up in terms of their GDP growth instead of this 3% number that we've seen on and off again over the last couple of years. We've also seen a fair amount of disputes between the US and China over the last few years. A couple years back, we saw that the US was going to begin requiring Chinese companies to open up their books to US auditors. And the Chinese government did not like this. They tried to basically keep US auditors out of the country. However, they came to an agreement last year that allowed US auditors to come in and look at Chinese companies' books. There's also been a lot of debate around who is the number one superpower in the world currently, whether it is China or the US. And China has really made a name for themselves over the last year or so, as they have signed deals with Russia and Saudi Arabia that have really strengthened the power of the Chinese yen. However, the US dollar has faltered as we have seen a lot of inflation that has impacted the currency. One of the biggest strengths of the Chinese economy has been their growing population. However, for the first time since the 1960s, we have seen the country's population fall. In 2022, China's population fell to 1.411 billion people. That is down 850,000 people from the previous year. And according to the United Nations, this trend could continue for the country. We could see them hit 1.3 billion people by the year 2050. And overall, this could have a negative impact on the Chinese economy as a whole, as one of the strengths of their economy has been their cheap labor force due to their massive population. One lever that China still does have to strengthen their economy is their interest rates. They have been a lot slower about lowering their interest rates than the US was. We can see that back in 2020, they lowered their interest rates by about a half a percent and maintained it there for all of 2021. Then they have seen continual drops of slow light amounts in their interest rates down to where they're sitting at now of a little over 3.4%. And overall, this could help them strengthen their economy. If they continue to drop their interest rates, that will make money more available for companies like Alibaba and JD to spend on expansion of their overall businesses. And if we look at Alibaba's numbers, analysts are currently projecting a fair amount of growth over the next couple of years. We could see that their current estimates are sitting at $9.22 in EPS. That is expected to grow to $10 
and five cents in EPS by 2025, which would be a 9% increase in EPS over that time period. If we look at the low expectations, they're sitting at $7.72 for 2024 and $7.31 for 2025, which would be a 5.3% decline in earnings over that time period. If we look at the high estimates, they are currently estimating $10.14 for 2024 and $11.19 for 2025, which would be a little over a 10% increase year over year. And if we look at JD's numbers, analysts are expecting a little bit more growth out of JD than Alibaba. We can see that analysts for 2023 have an average expectation on EPS of $2.92. For next year, they're expecting $3.39. That would be 16.1% growth year over year. Low estimates come in at $2.65 for this year and $2.84 for next year, which would still be 7.2% growth year over year. And high estimates come in at $3.19 for this year and $3.80 seven cents for next year, which would be 21.3% growth year over year. Both of these companies are starting to recover off of low EPS numbers. We can see that for Alibaba just a few quarters ago, they had below a dollar of trailing 12 month EPS. However, if we look just a couple years ago, they had above $8 in EPS. So we are starting to see those numbers recover and they're gradually getting back up there. But right now they're trading somewhere around $4.50 of trailing 12 month EPS. JD is in a little bit of a similar similar situation, however, slightly worse. We can see that a few quarters ago, they had three quarters in a row of negative EPS numbers that dropped their trailing 12 month EPS down to negative $1 of EPS. However, since then they have really started to recover. We've seen numerous quarters of around 50 cents of EPS, and that has helped drive back up their trailing 12 month EPS to where it is sitting at now of around $1.97. However, just a couple years back, we could see that they were bringing in around $5.10 in trailing 12 month EPS. So they still have a long ways to go to get back to that level. I did want to look at valuations of these two companies. So here we have Alibaba on the left and then JD over here on the right. And we are comparing their current year EPS numbers. So we have anywhere from around $7.72 all the way up to $10.14. And if we look at those PE ratios, what they equate to for the business is anywhere from nine to around 11 and a half for Alibaba. If we look at JD, we can see again the similar trend. So they have $2.65 in EPS for a low number and $3.19 for a high number. And if we look at the valuation for those, we can see that it's anywhere from around 10 and a half to around 12 and a half. So JD is trading at a little bit higher of a valuation compared to where Alibaba is trading. So full disclosure, I do own Alibaba shares. I do not own any JD shares. I personally like the position that Alibaba is in more compared to JD. I think they have a little bit more diversification in terms of their overall business. Also, like we saw from their EPS numbers, their trailing 12 month EPS numbers were always positive. JD, we saw it drop further and actually fall into the negative range. And also in terms of valuation, Alibaba is trading at a lower valuation compared to JD. So in my opinion, Alibaba is a slightly better buy than JD, but either one is trading at a very low discount. If we saw their valuations double, we would actually see the stock price double as well. And you could see 100% gains. And I think that would be possible if we saw more improvement in terms of the relationship between the US and China, as well as the Chinese economy in general. I think investors right now are trying to figure out where the Chinese economy is headed in terms of population and GDP growth, because they have been a little bit all over the place over the last couple of years. Keep in mind, do not buy a company just because some random guy on YouTube talked about it. Make sure you are doing your own research and looking into companies that meet your risk tolerance as well as your time horizon. So with all that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. And as always, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day.